Okay, uh, welcome back to uh, Retox.com. Um, today, this is a, just to talk about multimeters or bench multimeters in 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 particular. Um, here's the original meter that I've been using for a long time. Um, uh, obviously, um, back in the day when I worked for BT, I had a, a moving coil multi multimeter, which was fairly cheap and built for a budget and and after a number of years we did some we were doing digital work and I ended up uh, being given a fluke which was uh, an order of magnitude uh, more accurate um, time has moved on and actually um, this thing that I bought I think I bought it this probably 20 years ago um, it's very accurate um, and very cheap. I think it was very cheap back in the day. Just a, a standard sort of VC99. And there's, there's any number of multimeters available on the market you can buy. And they're all pretty good these days. There we are. It does everything. It does everything. Sort of Swiss Army knife of um, multimeters. Um, it's got a thermocouple, the usual probes. And to be honest, it's, it's great. Um, I use this for years. Um, but I had problems with it. Um, uh, setting, I had to set it up, of course, to use it and, I, and stand it somewhere or lay it somewhere, uh, connect it, use it. Um, I usually left it out. Um, and then after a few days, I would forget why I left it. And then I would be searching around for my multimeter. Um, it just it found it generally annoying. So excellent piece of kit, but... Um, really better for field days and when you've got to go testing um, and you need something portable because that's really what it is it's a portable multimeter okay um, so um, I then replaced that with a bench meter and the, the meter that I chose was this one here it's called an East Tester now there are loads of meters available, bench meters, good quality meters. And if you really want to spend a lot of money, you can buy yourself a fluke or something really good. Um, but to be honest, I didn't need that level of accuracy. I just needed something that worked and worked well and was reliable. And so I chose this one. I think it only cost me about £80, which is pretty, pretty damn cheap, really, when you consider all the things that it does. So the advantage of a meter like this, um, if you're doing um, uh, work, is primarily it ain't moving around. <laughs> and um, whenever I need it, it is where I left it. It's always just there on the on you know on a shelf on the bench, in the right place for me to to just grab the leads and make some measurements or do whatever I want with it. So. Um, that, that's its main advantage. Um, I'm not. I don't have to search. Whenever I need to do some measurements, that's it. Um, I did when I got it. Um, I did have some concerns. Well, well, was it accurate or was it really just a, a bit of a toy? And I thought, well, let let's test it against a, a proper source. Um, so to test it against a proper source, you need a proper source. And here here is one. Um, this, this is, these are available on eBay. I've got a couple here, actually. These are available on eBay and all the different sites, Ali, um, in different guises. But the core of this is called an AD584. And it's a precise voltage reference. So you can get, um, using this link, moving this link, you can get 2.5, 5 volts, 7.5 volts, and 10, 10 volts. Um, at the output. So this is the input here, and this is the output. So if I connect this to um, to the uh, to my bench supply here, I know this is. I could wire this up properly, and you can buy these in little boxes now. They look very nice, you know. But this is what it is. It's, it's fairly cheap and cheerful. There we go. The lights on. All right. So that's running. You can see I've got about 20 volts on it, and um, I'll put the link into the second position. There we go and we can measure it and see what the voltage is. Let me just put this on DC volts. There we are. I'm going to put these clips on it because it saves mucking about, fiddling uh, with um, holding holding these on. This is fine for probing around, but not good for, um, 
for just constant measures like this. Here we are. Right, let's put this on here. Oop, do, do. Love it. There we go. And um, oh, we are saying five volts, and lo and behold, the meter reads five volts. Five point zero 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 volts. So it's pretty good at that um, that voltage. Um, but I've noticed over the years it's gone a bit out of calibration. So let me just turn the voltage to 10 volts and you'll see, oh, that, that's not so good. Uh, so it's, it's reading 9.998 volts. So it's 0.002 of a volt out at 10 volts. So I might have to go back into the calibration menu at some point and just give it a tweak. Um, although for day-to-day -day use, um, 0.002 of a volt is good enough, really, um, for most of what I do. Um, I don't need that level of accuracy. What what I need is just to know, is the 5 volt rail there, is the 12 volt rail there, and, and so on and so forth. Um, obviously, this is a standard multimeter, so you can do voltage, current, resistance, continuity, temperature. It'll even measure frequency, although I've got I've got better things for measuring frequency, the, the GPS locked. Um, and uh, so that, that was really it. I say, if you haven't got one, these are really worth investing in. If you've got a, if you've got a work area you're at all the time um, and you're struggling, or not struggling, but using a, a, a normal multimeter, portable multimeter, it really is worth buying yourself a bench meter and um, save yourself certain amount of angst um, whenever you need to do the voltage you're not balancing things and find, trying to look where is this where is this display where have I put it and so on and so forth um, of course it's not an LCD display it's it's a nice bright um, OLED display or whatever so you can actually um, you can always see it as well plenty of ranges as well right and uh, that's it really so um, thank you for your time um, awkward moment.